Greetings and welcome to Mystery Babylon News Radio. This is November 20th, 2013, and my co-host tonight is Yurt Glisman of Belgium. Now, I have three, we have three calls up here on uh, TalkShoe, and this is a series. It's called The Jesuits Derooting the Reformation. And uh, this is a, a series by, by itself. But uh, anyway, I, I feel real blessed to have met Jörg Glesman and the fact that he is in Europe. <clears throat> you kind of, what's happened for me here this last couple of months when after I've met Jörg is the fact that the, the world's getting a little bit smaller. And by comparing notes with Yurk, we realize that the same thing is going on, and they've been telling the same lies to to Europe or to the whole world. So, with that, you know, I want to welcome you tonight. Uh, uh, and what we're going to cover tonight, uh, Yurk, is we're going to kind of recap the last two broadcasts, and we've been we've been talking about the first and second Reich. And getting fresh in our mind what the First and Second Reich was all about before we start talking about the Third Reich. Because uh, you're going to find when we get into the Third Reich that most people, the, the world has been lied to us and have no clue of what the Third Reich or the Second Reich or the First Reich. So to start it off a little bit tonight, uh, uh, you know, uh, Let's kind of recap a little bit about the Holy Roman Empire and, and, and what that's meant to us in history. Yeah, hello, Walt. Thank you for having me on mm. again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope all our listeners will get used to my, when I listen to it, horrible accent. <laughs> my horrible German accent I have in English. <laughs> uh, but anyway. That makes it uh, authentic. That makes it authentic, yeah. Yeah, I, I have the same here in Belgium, you know. I speak Dutch, and um, last year my mother came uh, to to live with me because she she lived in Germany and uh, but she lost the leg. Uh, she got the leg amputated uh, for medical reasons because of mistakes doctors made years ago already. And I couldn't have I couldn't have her live alone in Germany or put her into a home that was never come up into my mind. So I took her in to live with me here, and then we had a very difficult time last year where she twice went to the hospital. She only weighed about 31, 32 kilos, which is really not much for a person of 1 meter 65 length, and uh, even with one leg, 31 kilos is very small. And Well, she got out of it anyway. What I wanted to say is, since she lives here, of course I speak German with her because she doesn't speak any English or Dutch or whatever, and um, some some friends of mine here in Belgium told me that my German accent in speaking Dutch is stronger than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was coming back by, by speaking German here at home, of course. And that's also the same thing when I when I listen to myself on these radio shows or the videos that I make on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, and I listen to that and I make it in English, I say, oh, God, you got a very, very strong German accent. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like you say, that makes it a little bit authentic. And uh, before we go into something really deep today, uh, uh, first of all, I really want to thank God that I made your acquaintance some, some months ago. Yes, it is It is maybe a story that we should cover here some sometimes. Because we say like God works in mysterious ways, but we have no idea how mysterious his ways really are. I mean, uh, some months ago, you even had no idea that you were going to the microphone and make the radio show, right? That's right. That's right. And there you are. Now you are having three broadcasts a week. On Wednesday with me, on Saturday with Wayne, and on Sunday with Wayne and me. Right? Right. Right. In the meantime, your assistant Lori from Lori's Block Talk, Block Talk Radio. That's also something we should advise our listeners to go to because there's also a lot of very uh, interesting information uh, from Lori Berkebar. She lives in Alaska, when I quite remember right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a very cold state, but um, she's a kind of a warm woman. 
but I have to tell you, you have to get to know her before you can deal with her. <laughs> yes. She, she's got her own, she's got her own personality, but yeah. luckily, luckily for that, you know. And that's, that's what sometimes, you know, people, they always want somebody to be in a box, and they put us all in a box, and when people jump outside that box, they, and they, they, uh, they stand out. And, uh, you know, we're all, one thing that I've learned about myself here this last, you know, the last three or four years when I started to really realize who was pulling the chains on the mass media and controlling buying habits and, and entertainment and all of this, it, it, uh, it has really taken me back and, and, and that's why it's such a gift that I've met uh, you, York, is the fact that, uh, and then so after I've met you, I've, I've, I've talked to, uh, uh, we've talked to England, we've talked to, uh, to South Africa, and a, a fellow in India. And, you know, and then when you start comparing notes, you realize, God, they're doing the same thing. That blasted. We just we were just talking before we went on air here about, and let's bring this up just a little bit about. I used to call it before I even met you. The most lethal weapon that man has ever devised is the TV. Oh, yeah. And 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 you know you know sometimes Americans, I mean we we're we're in this little box, and you know we've been taught from the from the from the cradle that we're the biggest and the baddest and we've been liberators all over the world and and uh, you know all these wars that we've been going through that we're liberating people you know and and of course when you come to the end you find out who is behind this and this is why this broadcast is about I yeah, mean you're liberating you're liberating the people from their freedoms that's right that's what America does Yes, yes, yes. In, in, in other words, we, we we need when you fully when we fully understand history. I mean, in other words, people. Uh, uh, I mean, in other words, uh, they, all through history and and, and 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 getting back to the TV, it's because of the TV of putting one one person against another person. Like we had World War One and World War Two, and the radio was just coming in. But uh, uh, I, I, I'm a baby boomer. I was born in 1944, and uh, you know I was raised in front of that TV, and, and I got a I got the TV's version of history. And and into to all of a sudden wake up at 69 and realize that it was nothing but a damnable lie. When you turn that TV on, you, you know, the first thing that comes out of it, it's, it's a lie. They're not telling you, I, you know, I just came across something, and I haven't had a chance to, to visit with you about this, but I was up in a talk show, talk show uh, 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 call, and they're talking about, you know, these 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 false flags that have been, and they call, they, they, they call these these actors, uh, impersonators. I mean, in other words, some of these events that we're seeing, I mean, they've actually, I've actually, I've actually watched some of these videos and, and some of this stuff is staged. How much it's staged, we don't, you don't know. When you turn, that's the reason why it's so dangerous. You know, um, you know, uh, anyway, that's, uh, that, you know. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I have to interrupt you there because otherwise I will forget this point. It's very interesting. I received an email today uh, from somebody on YouTube um, that I do not know. He sent me a message on my video. Uh, you know that I made a video on, um, uh, on Diane Reedy. Yes. Um, the house stenographer that came up for um, saying that uh, God will not be mocked, and um, if the United States of America were a free nation under God, that would not have been the Constitution would not have been written by Freemasons. You remember that, right? Yes. And I got today um, uh, um, an email from from somebody that I do not know. Anyway. 
uh, and he said uh, that there is a channel uh, on YouTube who said that this Diane Reedy doesn't even exist. So the point is, I went to that channel of the, of the guy that he told me. I couldn't find anything there, so I wrote him a message um, that I got the information that he uh, researched the subject of Diane Reedy and um, uh, says, uh, or found out that uh, she even doesn't exist. And I asked him to, uh, to, uh, to answer me to that, but I haven't heard of him yet. It's um, the guy that, self, that sent me the message was Elfman52, and the guy that was researching the subject is uh, probably the name of Living on Planet Z. Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested to see some more information on that. But uh, uh, because you were speaking of this false flags, you know, um, there was this false flag in, uh, at the Boston Marathon. There was this false flag at the um, uh, at the Aurora shooting with the Batman guy. Um, there was this. Uh, there are all false flags. The false flag in Washington, the shooting there in the Navy Yard. <clears throat> They're all false flags. I, I saw videos. Uh, I saw videos of that where the people with the badges were, and they told you, okay, you got this kind of badge, you got this kind of badge because you are doing this, you are impersonating that, you're an actor, you're an organizer. They have all different colors. Every everyone has to check in here. They even saw uh, showed the check-in point, uh, and even in the official videos, they sh they showed that, but from the back. But when you know that from the front, you recognize it easily. So it's it's really they are they are putting Hollywood in the news in in uh, in that point. Yes, I mean in, in other words, and it's it's simply, it's 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 simply just that. I mean, in other words, you cannot. You, how much when you turn that TV on, you don't know they, they, they you don't know what to believe. I mean, the, the first mistake you make is when you turn the TV on. <laughs> just what I say. Yeah. Don't turn it on, then you don't. Yeah, I, I, I mean, and because because with this media, it is so easy to turn. And this is what this is what's happened. This is what's happened, and this this is something new. This goes back to uh, goes back in history to 1776 and the founding of this of the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, the average person doesn't. Has never had any real history, no. And so, and so you know, and, and so, so that's what you know. One thing I want to lead into, lead into, is the is what is is the Holy Roman Empire. I mean, how many people realize what the Holy Roman Empire was about and who ruled? Why was it called the Holy Roman Empire? Well, that's an interesting question. Holy, it probably was because it was connected with the Vatican. That's part so of it. Yeah, that's that's probably part of it. But um, the Holy Roman Empire that we are talking about is uh, actually the West Roman Empire because you had two. Right? You had the West and the East. The East was ruling from Constantinople, and the West was ruling from Rome. And um, in this Holy Roman Empire, you had one. Uh, Nation, let's call it that. It was not a nation state, but you had um, the, the German nation, the Germans, who were formerly the, uh, as um, Julius Caesar called them, um, the barbarians, uh, this uh, German people. And you had this um, uh, Holy Roman Empire of German nations. So you had the one big state of a German nation. But this was, this was, that was. Uh, different kingdoms and duchesses and principalities. So that was not just a nation state. That didn't exist as a nation state. The first time it existed as a nation state, and that is what people do not know, is from 1871. Before that, it was the kingdom of Prussia and the kingdom of Habsburg, like uh, Austria, Hungary, you know. They were the two biggest ones. You had the kingdom of Bavaria. You had the kingdom of... Uh, Hannover also in the north of Germany, and, and you had uh, different duchesses, and you had different principalities. The first time that there was a nation state founded, so that you really could speak of Germany, is 1871. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, that was something that was done by uh, the so-called Iron Chancellor, as he is called in German. Uh, but I don't like that word very much because that always reminds me of the Iron Lady of England, Margaret Thatcher. 
oh my God, what an evil woman was she. And uh, actually, this mark was not such evil, but so I don't like this iron title in it. But anyway, he is the one that we have to thank for that there was a German Reich. And you have to know, under Bismarck, Germany was a world innovator in building a welfare state. German workers enjoyed health, accident, and maternity benefits. They enjoyed canteens, changing rooms, and even a national pension scheme. And that was uh, actually, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the first in the world that that came from. But on the other hand, I don't see that all that positive anymore because that's also the start where the state takes care of the people. You but, know? but also, also this one important thing happened in Bismarck's time, and tell me if I'm correct, is they, they threw out the Jesuits out of Germany. Uh, I don't have to correct you on that. Um, the point is that uh, Bismarck uh, signed um, a law in 1872 that banned the Jesuits from German soil. Um, that law was then later a little bit uh, weakened in 1904. I still have to do more research on to see in which matter it was uh, weakened, and it was totally dis uh, uh, distracted in 1917 um, when the Americans came into the war. Uh, anyway, Bismarck got fired from the from the German Kaiser, the German Emperor, in 1890 because they too often disagreed. And therefore, you have to know that the emperor was Jesuit-controlled from the beginning, and Bismarck was not. I mean, yeah. if you want to know something about Bismarck, I can give you a, a website or, or another that I found where you can read very interesting uh, curriculum of Bismarck, at least in German. I haven't found that in English yet, but now this is interesting. Now, this is very important. This is read the series is called The Jesuits Derooting the Reformation. And... York, you mentioned when the United States came into the war, that's when the Jesuits were reinstated. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, the fact is that um, that law was banished in 1917, and the fact is that the Americans entered the war in 1917. Yes. Now, so I'm not saying I'm not saying that there that there's uh, some kind of connection to this, but I doubt that it wasn't. And the point, the point is, you know, the point is that at the end of 1916, the Germans had won the war. England was on the ground. France was uh, was overrun. Germany had won the war, absolutely on all fronts. And the only reason that the war continued was because Rothschild, not Rothschild, wrote a letter to the English. Uh, Secretary of Foreign States, Mr. Balfour, which later became the, uh, known as the Balfour Declaration, he wrote a letter to them that they will make sure that the Americans join the war so that England still had the possibility to defeat Germany when they will be promised the state of Palestine. Because Palestine was in that time under English control. The whole um, what we called uh, the, the what we used to call the Ottoman Empire, so uh, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, uh, all these uh, all these countries, they weren't independent countries. All that was under the uh, supervision of France and uh, and England. Especially Palestine was under English, under English control. And uh, Lord Rothschild asked to have this Palestine to find their nation state of Israel, and for that. Uh, they needed to win the war. They needed to defeat the Germans. And that's how the Americans came in there, because of a false flag, the sinking of the Lusitania. I mean, people really have to look this up. The sinking of the Lusitania is one of the most famous false flags uh, that there ever was, because the Germans even made the effort to uh, uh, to nail notes on every light pole in, uh, in, in, the, in the haven of New York to warn people not to go on the ship because if it comes to German waters, it will be sunk. It was put in the newspapers, too. It was put in the newspapers. Yeah, the Germans even paid for, for a whole page, uh, I think in the New York Times it was, for a whole page of warning the people not to enter the ship because 
if it entered the German or the international waters, and uh, Germany at the time had already submarines, and all that stuff, they were very uh, sophisticated with their marine, uh, and they said, if we, if we can catch that ship, we will sink it, because we know uh, you will have weapons on it. And they had weapons on it. They had ammunitions on it. They also had a lot of people on it. Anyway, they were warned, still they went, and of course, the Germans sunk it. So, that's the classical false flag that you can have. It's the same, they repeated absolutely the same game with the Japanese in World War II. When they cut the Japanese out of every oil supply that they had, and uh, didn't leave them any choice but to attack, uh, but to attack the Americans, what they did then in Pearl Harbor. And don't tell me that the Americans didn't know because their, their most modern ships and their most modern weaponry they took out a week before. A week before the attack, they took all that stuff out of Pearl Harbor. Yes. So, yes. of course, that was known. There was another false flag. Because, you know, one day after Pearl Harbor, you have had one million American men running to the offices and saying, I volunteer to go to war. I volunteer to go to war. Because the American people didn't want any war before that, and the American people didn't want any, uh, any, any war before 1917 either. They didn't want to have to do anything with it. But that's the problem always. It's not the people. It's only the governments. So please think about this. Just get rid of the government and we will have the most peaceful world that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, this sounds crazy, but not having a government doesn't mean that you have no structure. Yeah. Having, no government, having no government doesn't mean that you have no rules to live by. And... and uh... You know, you shared this uh, quote with me the other day. This is by Napoleon. He says, this is a quote by Napoleon. There is no more good natured. There is no more good natured, but not easily more believing people than the German. No lie can be conceived broadly enough. The Germans believe it, a slogan which was given them. They pursue their countrymen with greater bitterness than their real enemies. Now, what you were just saying is what they they applied that same rule on the American people with the bombing of, of, of Pearl Harbor. In other words, the day after the day after Pearl Harbor, I mean, people were uh, they were both they, they were they believed they were believing they were believing they were being threatened and da 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 and they and they and prior to. December 7th, 70% of America did not want your war with Europe. Yeah, that, that's right. I agree with that. But I don't agree with that uh, at all, what you say, because a slogan which was given to them, they pursued their countrymen with bigger bitterness than their real enemy. You know? Yeah. That's the big point. Well, you, 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 never, you never push the one American against the other American. I mean, you did a little bit with the... Um, oh, I so see what you're saying. With the yes. so-called civil war yes. between 18, 1861 and 1865, if I'm correct, a little bit like that. But no, with, with the Germans, you can you can tell, tell something to the North Germans and something uh, something different to the South Germans and push them together, and they will kill each other because it is in the interest of uh, that somebody that told them, and that somebody is maybe English or American or French or I don't know, and and, and that's the point that Napoleon wanted to make. Yes, yeah, because and because of the history of the Germans, because of all the different kingdoms. Yes, and that's exactly what I wanted to say. Exactly, because you had the different kingdoms, duchies, and uh, different um, what's the other word, principalities you had in there. So there was no German need, there was no German country, there was no German people. There were people Bavarian, there were people Prussia, there were people Saxons. There were people Hanoverian, there were people Baden-Württemberg, whatever you want to call them, but they were no Germans. Yeah? And that's what he meant uh, when, when you take the whole German-speaking uh, area and you tell something to this one and you tell something to that one, you can really push them up together uh, to kill each other for the benefit of the third one, which and, uh, normally is uh, the Pope. He's always the benefiter. Most he's the benefiter. And do, do, wouldn't you say that that's what the Third Reich was doing, was putting all this, all these uh, together. That the Third Reich, they, 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 in other words, they were putting, uh, uh, uniting all these different 
different uh, divisions that were in in Germany. Yeah, you know, I, I have a, a very interesting quote that I want to read here uh, from uh, Göring at the Nuremberg trials in 1946, sometime before he killed himself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that. Not, not, uh, I don't mean just you especially, but I mean also our listeners. Really listen to this, what Göring said at that time. Quote, Why, of course, the people don't want war. Why would some poor slob on a farm want to risk his life when the best he can get out of it is to come back to his farm in one piece? Naturally, the common people don't want war, neither in Russia, nor in England, nor in America nor for that matter in Germany. That is understood. But, after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine the policy, and it is always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it is a democracy, or a fascist dictatorship, or a parliament, or a communist dictatorship. Voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That's easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same way in any country. And that's what happened at Pearl Harbor. Exactly. Now you're seeing it. Yes. And in Germany, Germany it was in the beginning after Hitler got elected uh, a few days later, um, they uh, set the Reichstag on fire. So that the parliament uh, blamed it on the communists and said, now we're going to have to have some uh, very strong rules, police rules, and um, that's what so-called Ermächtigungsgesetz made. So that made that the government at that time, uh, with no uh, accord from from the parliament, could make all the rules. So that was the turning from the democracy to a dictatorship. Yeah, they took that. And uh, you Americans experienced the same thing, but you don't, uh, you haven't realized it yet. What do you think the Patriot Act stands for? In 9-11, the same thing. Yeah, but what do you think the Patriot Act stands for? I mean, the word Patriot Act, if, if, you, if you take it uh, by its word, uh, the word Patriot Act doesn't even mean, uh, has, has, has nothing to do with Patriot. You know what the word Patriot and Patriot Act stands for? Go ahead. You know that. No, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to because I know I have it written somewhere here. Um, uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act of 2001. You can look that up in uh, in Wikipedia. Yeah, Patriot Act, providing yeah. appropriate tools required. To intercept and obstruct terrorism act, Patriot. Yeah. The, the, so the, the whole document is called "Uniting and Strengthening America by Providing Appropriate Tools Required to Intercept and Obstruct Terrorism Act." And it's 2001. Patriot has nothing to do with patriotism. So I can. Only tell only a fool trusts his soul to a preacher or his health to a doctor, his right to a lawyer, his choices to a politician, his money to a banker, information from a news channel, his history from a school system, education from a university, security from a police force, or freedom from a government. Think about that. That's exactly, and that's exactly what they did with 9-11. Not only did they use it to clamp down on the United States, but they used that to, to, in the whole world to strengthen their security measures at airports and to fire off the third world, world War III, the War on Terror. Yeah, and they give it a very nice name, like Homeland Security as if the homeland needs to be secured. America was never attacked from the outside. 9-11 was an inside job, and everybody who can think clearly knows that. 
So America was never attacked from the outside. But you know, when the President of the United States takes his vows, or his oath, takes his oath, he swears on the Constitution to protect the American people from all enemies outside or domestic, or foreign or domestic, right? Right. Domestic. Why doesn't anybody think, why? I mean, the president has to swear on this. So this means there must be domestic enemies. Otherwise, why would you swear on that? It makes no sense you wouldn't swear on protecting the country from d domestic enemies if there were not any domestic enemies. You, you know, since we mentioned 9-11, let's just solve this real quick. I mean, there's been hu literally hundreds of videos made. Uh, the alternative media with Alex Jones and all the 9-11 truthers. Let's solve 9-11. The two buildings turned to dust, and they yeah. fell in their place. Now, That's most people go, go over, they go over the top of that, but they don't understand. Two buildings turned to dust. Three. Yes. Well, or actually, <laughs> a total of seven, the whole complex, every one of the buildings were, 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 were brought down. But the point I'm, I'm making here is now we could spend the next hour, two hours trying to tell you how it happened. It doesn't matter how it happened. The buildings turned to dust and fell in their tracks. There was 14 survivors in, in Tower 2 that survived. How, how do 14 people survive when a building... 1,300 feet with 110 stories collapses on top of them. How do 14 people survive? Because the buildings did not collapse. The buildings turned to dust, and they went away. Now, it doesn't matter how they did it and the technology or whatever. That doesn't matter. But who benefited from it? Who benefited from it? The Vatican. Who did it? It was an inside job inspired by the Vatican through the Jesuits, through the CIA. It was an inside job. And not only the CIA, but the point is that all these intelligence agencies all over the world, is it the MI5, the MI6, the Mossad, the CIA, the NSA, the BND, the ISI, I don't know, call them all. On top, they all work together because they are all Jesuit controlled. They are all Jesuit found, founded. They all work together. And that's something that you find in your, in, in your Jesuit oath also. The Jesuits always control the both sides. Openly, they are opposed, but behind the scenes, they work together. You know, and at this point too, when we wait, when when you when you brought up the point uh, at the end of World War One, and the when they they brought the the Americans America into into the war, they brought the vat they brought the Jesuits the Jesuits had been kicked out of Germany. Exactly. Okay. Now where where did they come from? Where did they come from? Why haven't they ever been kicked out of this country? Because they founded the country. They founded the country. They it's financed the country. They own this company. They own this company, yeah, absolutely. They, they completely own it. You know, I was listening to a fellow reading a, 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 a book, and he, he mentions the CIA. This fellow mentions the CIA. They mentioned the Bilderbergers. The Bilderbergers are the ones that the Jesuits are. There's, I can't give you the name right now, but it, the, if you do the research, the Jesuits are the ones that founded the Bilderbergers. Well, Prince Bernard of the, Nether, uh, of the Netherlands was the one who founded the Bilderbergers, and he was a high-ranking Nazi, and he was a Jesuit. Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's the one I, I didn't. I didn't. It, it, and then we go to GMO. Who's behind Monsanto? Oh God. It's Knights of it's 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 the Knight of Malta. 
It's run by the Jesuits. It's like the same with the American media. I mean, uh, just to name a few uh, that, that the people also know that are listening to our broadcast here. Uh, you have CNN, which was founded by Ted Turner, and Ted Turner is a knight of Malta. And he is a, and you can look his quotes up on the internet, I don't have them here right now, but you can look them up. He's a eugenicist. He really wants to uh, get rid of 90% of the human uh, population, like written in the, in the Georgia Guidestones. He made really quotes on that. You can quote him. And another one who owns the media in America is, for example, do you know who owns the whole Fox network? Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. And what is Rupert Murdoch? Is he a Jew? He, no, he's a knight of Malta. Ah, so it's not the Jews that rule Hollywood and that rule the media. No. Oh, but, but no. Walt, Walt, sorry, can you say that? I mean, everybody is just blaming the Jews and it's blaming the Zionists. How can you come here and say, no, but he's a knight of Malta, he's no Jew. How can you say that Fox, I mean, Fox is this, uh, uh, this big Hollywood production, uh, Fox, I don't know what it's called in Hollywood, but because I don't watch any movies. You have all these TV channels and, and radio stations and probably newspapers and magazines that are under the Fox uh, wing. And then you have CNN with this whole network. How can you say that's run by Rupert Murdoch, who's a knight of Malta, and he's not a Jew? Well, that gives a bad spin to all the people that listen to Alex Jones, because he always blames the Zionists. Doesn't he? Yes. And he so also, there seems to be some more than just that behind it all. But also, when you bring up Alec Jones, uh, uh, I gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. The monastery. There's a there's a Catholic website that advertises on his on his broadcast. The reason why he doesn't say anything about the Jesuits is because he, I mean, he's part. I mean, there's websites up there. He's connected with the CIA. Yeah, look at this. Uh, look at the sign in Info Wars. In the O, he now has uh, a red sign with a white cross in it. That's from the Octagon from Switzerland. That's a Templar sign. And who are the Templars? Mm -hmm. The Jesuits. You know, and Alex Jones. Alex Jones is controlled by his father-in-law, who is a Knight of Malta. I mean, when you, you know, I, you know, sometimes I, I, I you know, York, and I, and I, I could say this, sometimes I, I, I've been corresponding with a fellow that's just getting interested in some of this history and stuff. I wish, I, I wish sometimes that somebody could refute, I've had a website called Grand Design Exposed. Now it's going to be going on its fourth year here in January. And you, the grand design exposed, you know, the grand design comes out of Catholic publications. That is, the, that is their design, the grand design. And the reason why it's called the grand design exposed is the author, John Daniels, when he wrote his book, he labeled his book the grand design exposed because... In other words, when we're what got us into this this discussion is when we were talking about the end of World War One. You see, we're we are going to get into the length, and we're going to discuss the Third Reich, and we're going to, some of the most important things we're going to discuss is what happened after the war, the atrocities, the genocide that was committed not by Germany, not by the Japanese. So in any war, there's atrocities. But nothing compares with what the Allies did to in World War II. How many people, everybody has heard about the firebombing of Tokyo. They figure... 500,000 people perished that night in Tokyo. 
But how many of you that are listening to this broadcast know that there were 67 cities firebombed in Japan? They were kicked out. The Jesuits were kicked out of out of Japan in the 15, late 1500s. And in other words, and there was only three cities left when they dropped the two atomic bombs. And they told us the president of the United States tells the um, the world that they saved a million lives by not invading Tokyo after they had firebombed 67 cities because the people were sworn to 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 fight to the death and if there's any world war 2 veterans listening this is not to take it you were doing just what you were told to do Because you thought it was right. Because you thought it was right. It was no different than the Germans. They were doing what they were told they were supposed to do because they thought it was right. There's no difference. The only difference, and we're going to get into it in a broadcast, you see, who was behind this genocide? Was it the American people? Was it the German people? Was it the Japanese people? No, it was the Jesuits. The research is there. The research is there if you want to find this information. Edmund Walsh was the was the Handler for Eisenhower, General MacArthur. Edmund Walsh went to the Nuremberg trials. I, I, and she, she, in other words, people wanted, and even to this day, and I have to be, I'm thankful, you know, because that York, if somebody should be, be angry, it should be York. You could get really angry if you didn't understand who was behind this. I'm not. I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Mm-hmm. I'm disappointed in my brethren. Mm-hmm. I'm disappointed in that so few people nowadays um, take it on them to 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 study the real truth, because the Jesuits make it so comfortable to live in the lie and the people rather hear a lie they've heard a thousand times than the truth they hear at one time and that is probably inconvenient to them you know I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not mad but I'm really really disappointed that living today is probably I mean what what what's the average person doing in their life? They attend school for ten to twelve years, maybe a few years university afterwards, maybe going direct to work afterwards in school, find a partner, and in these Sodom and Gomorrah times, <clears throat> it may be a, a man and a man, a wife, a woman and a woman, or it may be even a both and a both. You sometimes really cannot tell anymore. Um, in these wicked times that we live in today, find a partner, have their jobs, go on vacation, every few years buy a new car. Then when you are when you are retired, maybe you have one, two, three, four years that you can enjoy. More of the pharmaceutical companies will probably not go to give to you because when you live off the social system, you're living off the of the of their cash that is not wanted. So you can better perish when you're done working, when you're done doing something for them. And they're going to die and nobody's asked themselves, what have I done here? What's life really about? You cannot tell me that life is all about just going into the hamster wheel every morning again. 
There has to be more to life than that. And there's more to life than who wins the Super Bowl. And yeah, absolutely. Or, or wins the Formula One championship, or or wins this tennis game, or or or, 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 or of, of of football. I mean, soccer that we have in, in, in Europe here, which is immense, popular. It's I, I I never liked it. I mean, even as a child, I was sometimes in the stadium. I mean, I wasn't more in there than ten times, I guess, all my life together. But even this ten times, I always thought, well, that's just like they told us in school about the Romans. Bread and games. With the gladiators that fought there, or with the Christians and the Jews, they fed to the lions. I mean, don't think that this is some strange thing from 2,000 years ago. We will go there again. And I know that we will go there again because Hollywood showed us already. And to know that you only have to watch the movie Marathon Man that is based upon a novel from Stephen King and, and the role in the, in, in the main role is played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is a Nazi and who is Jesuit controlled. Your former um, governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator. Yeah? Gives, it gives you chills when you think that they made him a governor. And they made yes, Ronald Reagan. It gives you even more chills to consider that he could have become American president. Because they laid the foundation right now with Obama, who is not an American, maybe, probably. Who no. knows? No, he got, he's not. He got, more birth certificates, he got more birth certificates than I got underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess what we're trying to bring in this broadcast is to open people's minds and realize when you start really studying this history, you know it reads like no other novel could ever write be wrote. I mean it's 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 you know and it's evil. These people are evil. In the purest form. You know I'm I'm I mean in other words. I, I, I notice with people, I've felt the same thing about this country and my country here. You know, listen, I've been raised and been taught about something that never existed. They taught, they taught us things about this country that never, ever existed. And uh, that's another broadcast we've been doing every Sunday on the Jesuits' connection to 1776. You know, the, Je the Jesuits are, are are prevalent in history. I mean, this is where this is where it, it always. In other words, in, in America, all of a sudden, this is the land of the free and and the brave, and you know, and and the people cannot get out and out cannot look outside the box. You know, and no or no the Americans do is Americanize the world. Yes. They have already they have already the Federal Republic of Germany or Germany or whatever you want to call that it's, fake state. It's the fifty first as the fifty first state. And, yeah. and and then they are going to, to Americanize the whole world. Because you know, America's got this great principles of freedom and everything and we have to bring that to the world because we are the only righteous and every, everybody else is wrong. They did that in Korea, they did that in Vietnam, they did that in Iraq, they did that in, in, uh, in Libya, um, they did that in Afghanistan, they are going to do that in Syria, they are going to do that in Iran. And who is Every the... land that is a little bit opposed to every, every country that is a little bit opposed or uh, has its own David or has its own meaning. But, you know... I'm, I'm not getting crazy, getting crazy on that because today you have really first to understand that all these countries that I just named up, summed up, all these countries are Jesuit controlled. It's just openly that they are against each other. Behind the scenes, they fight together. One thing, though, when you talk about this, though, the United States 
is the only country that they founded and they own it. They've never been kicked out of this country because it's their country. Well, today they will not be kicked out of any country anymore because they are too powerful. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. With, even with the Pope now being a Jesuit, yeah. a high-level Jesuit. And, and, and who was behind World War I and World War II? And they were using the Americans, the arm of the Americans. I mean, and with Lend-Lease, I mean, and, and supporting the, and the Russians, I mean, all they, was, all they were doing is, all they did is design and build a killing field in Europe. And they took advantage of the, let's say, good spirit of the Germans. I just, because we are almost running out of time. I mean, that's funny. In the beginning, I had no idea what we were going to be talking about. Now we only have 10 minutes left. But uh, there's, there's one thing I want to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, you uh, quoted Napoleon. There's no more good nature but easily believing people than the German. No lie can be uh, conceived broadly enough the Germans believe it. The slogan which was given to them, they pursue their countrymen with bit, greater bitterness than their real enemies. And I want to put to that quote from Napoleon a quote from our Chancellor Bismarck who founded the Second German Reich that existed between 1871 and 1918. Quote, the urge to serve foreign interests, even if only possible by abandoning national interests, is a sickness that is geographically limited to German territory. End quote. Say that one more time a little slow. Yeah, okay. The urge to serve foreign interests, even if only possible by abandoning national interests, is a sickness that is geographically limited to German territory. And that's the German Chancellor speaking of his own brethren. He knows how easily betrayed the people are and how they want to do good for everybody. And just to do good for in the, in the eyes of the Americans, it doesn't matter if their own people have to suffer for it. Mm-hmm. And that's all they've been doing after the Second World War. They take all the blames. They, talk, they take a blame for a Holocaust. That is maybe something that we can discuss uh, some other time but where there is more proof that it hasn't happened that way than there is proof that it hasn't, it has happened that way. With that, they give the founding of Israel the possibility. And today in Germany, when you even say the word Jew, you will be looked upon, oh, you're anti-Semitic, you're anti-Semitic. You cannot do anything. In, 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 they, they took the whole pride of the German people, you know. I mean, I, I, I read to you this, this um, you have to know this, when, when Germany was founded, the first Germany, 1871, there was, for, for 30 years, Germany struggled against Britain to be Europe's leading industrial power. Um, though both fell behind the United States, but representative of Germany's industry was the giant, uh, the steel giant, Trop, whose first factory was built in Essen. By 1902, that factory alone became a great city in its own, uh, with its own streets, its own police force, fire department, traffic laws, 150 kilometers of, of rail, 60 different factory buildings, 8,500 machine tools, seven electrical stations, 140 kilometers of underground cable, and 46 overhead. Germany really became an industrial power, and that was something that the British couldn't stand for. They didn't want to. And then they conspired together with French and Russia against Germany. And that's how it all started off to the First World War. And when then, and that is the biggest joke of them all, I mentioned already the Balfour Declaration. When the Germans were led into the mirror, the, the Hall of Mirrors in the uh, castle of Versailles outside of Paris, where they had to sign the truce uh, and the peace treaty after the First World War, the English came in waving with the paper that was the Balfour Declaration, laid it in front of the Germans and said, this is why you lost the war. 
the Germans up to that moment had no idea. It was everything that was taken from them. With their reparations they had to pay, with territory that was taken away from them, with uh, in, the, in, in the 1920s, the French um, even occupying part of Germany, uh, that's what I just reading um, the, from, from the steel, uh, that was in the Ruhr area and the Rhine area. Uh, the Rhine area was then uh, occupied by the French, uh, largely, in, in, in the 1920s, and that uh, gave uproars. We had this hyperinflation I told you about, um, and that I still have this, uh, this money paper. I, I have here uh, a, a bill of uh, 1 billion German marks from 1923, something, when you, when with one German, when, when just with a, with, a, with a load of this money, you couldn't even buy a loaf of bread, you know? Um, no, it's crazy you, that, that, destructed, that destructed Germany that much, that, that, the, that there was the plan from the, the beginning, that there had to be a re-rise of Germany, and the re-rise came through Hitler, and they pushed him into the Second World War, and they got what they wanted. And that's why we call this the de-rooting of the Reformation, because the roots of the Reformation are in Germany. And when you do not understand what the Jesuits are doing to Germany already since 200 years, or trying to Germany for 200 years, and very successful the last 100 years, you will never understand the whole world history at all. Also, I Germany, German, sorry, Germany really has to perish they don't want any German to survive. Look at the Morgenthau plan that was installed after the Second World War, first of all, and that there are plans up there. And we are going later into the, uh, into the Rhine Meadow camps yeah. from Eisenhower after the Second World War. That's all something that we're going to tell you about yeah. Yeah. and that you can also yeah. look up. But, uh, okay, and, I, 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 I let you talk now. Yeah. Well, well, one thing I wanted to say, we are not holocaust deniers yes there was a holocaust it was a german holocaust it was a german holocaust that meant they tried to kill as many jews and germans as possible as possible so anyway you know, we're getting down to the end here. We've only got three minutes, but uh, this was kind of a general discussion because, you know, the reason why when I get when I get to it's 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 something that's not being talked about. Right. You know, I give you an example: the the, the Rhine Meadow camps. I brought this on, up on Lori's Talk News Radio, and one of the listeners said. Well, why haven't they told us this? Well, it's 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 uh, it's now. Why haven't we learned about the about the sixty-seven cities that they fire, firebombed? And they firebombed six cities in Germany. And why? Why did they do this? Why? Can you imagine? Anybody in America or anybody in any place in the world, when you walk down the street, imagine looking up in the sky and seeing 800 bombers coming over the city. Stop whatever you're doing today and think about this. 800 bombers. This was this was being done within two three months of the end of World War II, when Germany had no defense. You know, I mean, it's it's we we have to stop and get off of this merry-go-round. This this especially in a, uh, my generation, the boob, baby boomers that were raised in front of the boob tube learning their World War II history off of the TV. Yeah, well, I, I think, sorry to inter interrupt you there, but I think what really people have to think about is why is, the, is it that the latest wars that are being fought are fought against civilians 
and not soldiers against soldiers anymore. Yes, that's another point that we're going to talk about. Yeah. We're going to discuss a book called The Losses. It's called The Losses, and it's going to have other losses. What is, what is it? What is it? Other losses. After oh, losses. losses. The, the other losses. The, the other losses. Yes. I mean, anyway, listen. We're run out of time, so listen. Uh, we, yeah, uh, uh, I, I just, I just want to, I just want to end with one quote that the people should think about. Okay. Sure. One quote that comes from Lenin. The best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. That comes straight out of Jesuitism. They control, they control both sides of an issue. They controlled, in World War II, they were controlling all sides. It was a called, World War II was called a theater of war. And that's the years of war, yeah. And that's, it, it any better. and that's exactly what it was. It was a and the theater. Pope and the Pope has a large place to watch. Yes, and he sat up there in his big castle and watched all this killing. And who benefited from who benefited from it? The Pope benefited from it. With that, we're gonna sign off. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye bye.